a staple in many meals from breakfast to supper across the country. They are one of the most important legumes for human consumption. They are estimated to be the most important source of dietary protein, iron and zinc, and the third most important source of calories. This delicious protein-filled food has undergone a lot of research to enrich the flavor, nutritional value, and field performance over the years. Let's delve into the world of beans and learn about its history, the present state, and the future plans which the National Agricultural Research Organization has for the progression of local varieties. In the beginning, uh, the focus was basically on the production of cultivars resistance to pests and diseases, which were the major problems by that time and were seen as major limiting factors to production. The research work is focused on production of cultivars or varieties that meet the farmer preferences and consumer and also the market. We look at uh, traits uh, that include yield, that include diseases, and also, most recently, we looked at the nutrition aspect. And here we are trying to uh, look at issues to do with breeding varieties that are high in iron, which is important for blood and the feeding. We also uh, to, uh, things to do with zinc, which is also important for uh, the development, general development of the human body. Also our focus is looking at uh, other abiotic stresses like drought, which is a major problem. We are looking at low soil fertility because most of the farmers now uh, without, do their farming without the addition of fertilizers. Some also don't know how to apply fertilizers. So we are looking at varieties that can do well in impoverished soils. We are also looking at how we can be able to disseminate all these technologies to our end users for the farmers. So we are also focusing on issues to do with impact studies to find out how far our varieties have gone uh, to reach the end users. The challenges are there, but the challenges differ. Like uh, some of the demonstrations we have been carrying, I physically, some of the demonstrations that I've been carrying out, there comes a time when you are applying beans and fertilizer, instead of raising the outcome or the productivity of the beans per unit area, you instead experience the reduction in the productivity. Why? This, the implication is that the soils are very fertile, eh? and when you add in fertilizer, you over fertilize the soil. So which means that the beans now come out vegetatively, growing with the leaves more than putting, in the pod, putting beans in the pods. It is now necessary for these farmers to have soil test kits. Once they say, and most even the organization like said or understand has always provided technical staff with soil test kits that before they plant, they first of all test the soil, and that's the way to go. That's one challenge. Another one is the high input cost of the fertilizer. The fertilizers are becoming expensively, very expensive for the ordinary farmers to afford. If government could subsidize the fertilizer, then you would find that the amount of fertilizer being used or adoption of the fertilizer would be higher. Uh, we are working with farmer groups uh, in numbers of 15 to 20. Those are self-help groups and uh, cooperative societies which have over 20 to 100 farmers. We work with men and women farmers. Our focus group is beans. As an organization, when we at the its inception, 
uh, it was out of uh, the cry of the people in the community where by then they had been faced with the, the banana wilt and the cassava mosaic and the coffee wilt whereby the farmers then or the farming community did not have any any crop to depend on as a cash crop because of the diseases that had happened then the only crop that had stayed free of diseases then was beans and the beans in this community one are grown traditionally by all the farmers two beans is a, a food crop and three beans is a nutritious crop which would help farmers in the community that was in uh, 2000 in 2000 uh, we had thought that once beans are brought in they can help people have a back uh, stop crop which can save them or enable them earn an income because most of the incomes had gone to the wheel, to the wheels that i have mentioned so this is how it all begins uh, so then uh, the people who were around contacted naro to provide them with the uh, bean seeds that would be used for farm trials to understand those crops that can do well, those varieties that can do well within this community. I've worked with these narrow people since I came in the district in 1999. Uh, we have been working with the Namulonge. We have been working with the Kawanda research. And even so, in the field, in the whole of Uganda, I've almost been the focal person in the district working with the narrow IITA and other organization in bringing down the disease. Uh, what we know about NARO is that uh, we have been almost, this, NARO basically is research and we are the extension in between and therefore we have been able to link with the farmers. So somehow we have been having a kind of a linkage which involves NARO, which is research, extension and farmer linkages. So when these varieties were um, brought in, they were planted on fields, small fields, to find out which variety would do very well. All of them have worked well, although there are certain challenges here and there. Now, when we talk about Nabe 4, it has worked very well uh, within our communities. Narrow Bean 1 has worked very well. Uh, narrow Bean 2 has worked very well, although Narrow Bean 2 has a challenge. It is highly marketable and it becomes very difficult for the farmers to help to collectively have it because the local market is interested in it very much. It has a very, very high market. Then when you go to Narrow Bean 1, and, and narrow bean three, uh, these are rich in iron. Actually, even narrow bean two is rich in iron. Uh, they are also highly marketable. Narrow bean three has a similar challenge like uh, narrow bean two because of its color. It is a yellow bean variety and uh, the market is interest. The local market is interested very much in the yellows. The beans are also too good. But for them, the beans work in different soils. And this one has been worked out by the extension workers and we have seen. For example, in the Rakai district, we had Chotera and we had Kakuto sub county, Kakuto counties, eh? and then we have Koch County. But in our day-to-day -day work, what we found out was that K132, that variety, 
could do well in coachy soils. But again, Nabe could not do well. But when you took Nabe in Kaku, Chotera and Kakuto, they were doing very well in those soils. They beat sandwich, and they contain some sand. Yet the other clay soil in Koch were basically for K132. So even the farmers know that this variety is good for our soils. Who can explain that one, the extension worker? So why the researcher is breeding the variety, we can easily try to locate where that variety can suit best in a particular area. From 1986 to date, we've so far released over 35 bean improved bean varieties. The first set of beans were released after the, the war, they released in 1994, and these were released when we were still in Kawanda, and that include K132 and K131. Uh, Majorly, these were targeting uh, yield, we were targeting a little bit of market, and then we were targeting diseases. After 1994, we released a series of varieties that include both bush and climber beans and these were suited more to reach out to the market and the test preferences of the farmers that we uh, work for. In the later uh, studies or in the later years we are now releasing varieties that are looking at the nutrition aspect, drought, uh, which are some of the important traits that we are looking at. Nutrition more to the fact that uh, almost 32 percent of the population in this country is malnourished, and drought with the fact that we are having seasonal changes, where we are looking at having uh, varieties that either mature early and can escape drought, like the varieties released uh, from uh, uh, 2010 onwards, or varieties that can withstand drought, like the varieties that are in the pipeline and are about to be released very soon. So with that, uh, Naro began sending in technicians who would come and train our field staff on technologies that are appropriate, on technologies that can enable them uh, have better yields from the gardens like things to do with planting or like when to plant issues to do with the seed rate uh, things to do with the pest and disease management pre post harvesting processes and the basics of uh, uh, value addition Initially, because they were for farm trials, uh, the beans were accessed freely. But what we did is the farmers that we were giving these to manage these uh, trials were requesting them to bring back something. Now, the people who have been doing that kind of contract farming in Rakai is the long-term organization, Community Enterprise Development Organization, SEDO. SEDO is the one that introduced most of the bean kind of farming on a contract basis. Uh, that was around 2000, around 2003, 4, 5, SEDO was with us. So, they would engage a farmer, give him the beans, he could pay a half price. Then after selling all the produce, then he would pay what? The balance. They would give the farmer the fertilizer and even give the beans to the what? To the farmer. But then they pay back. Eh? They would give him in kind and then he could pay back after he had what? He or she had harvested the beans. A bean is a self-pointed crop, which means that it's able to sustain itself over a longer period of time. Now, 
this has both an advantage and disadvantage. It has an advantage that farmers can replant their seed, but it has a disadvantage that seed companies and those large um, profit-based agencies do not work, not want to work with the beans. And this has become a problem because it becomes hard for us to transfer our technologies very easily to the farmers. Because if the seed companies were involved 100%, then we'll be able to just give the new technologies to the seed companies and the related down to the farmers. So as a bean research program, we've taken measures to ensure that we transfer the technologies that we've generated to the farmers. And this means directly or indirectly working with the farmers. Now, we've gone as far as trying to ensure that we farmers have new seed every season. And because we are a small group, we can't do that by ourselves. So we've partnered with quite a number of organizations We've partnered with NGOs and we've directly interacted with farmers by training them, first of all, to produce, know what the technologies are, then training them to start to develop or multiply their own seed. And at one point, uh, the Minister of Agriculture, which is mandated to inspect seed, does that for the seed companies but doesn't do that for the private uh, seed farmer groups that produce their own seed so we've worked with the uh, minister of agriculture to change some of the laws to be able to accept what we call the quietly declared seed that is seed produced by the farmers with ins minimum inspection and can meet the minimum standard of the seed quality standards that the Ministry of Agriculture emphasizes to ensure that at least we have enough seed that can go around in areas where the seed companies cannot reach. So we formulated these groups and some of these groups uh, like the Chazan Cooperative Union, uh, uh, SEDO, have been able to organize farmer groups to be able to produce their own seed to meet their own requirements within uh, uh, the villages. However, with time, the situation became a bit tricky. The farmers became untrustworthy. They would give them their beans. They would continue monitoring them during the growing season. If the farmer was given some about 50 kilos and he was expected to harvest about 500, 550 or 70 bags, the farmer would present 10 to the Community Enterprise Development Organization. So this untrustworthiness made SEDO to curtail or cut down the number of farmers it was working with because of being untrustworthy. Because it could not break even, this seed could be repacked. Eh? and be sold to other districts like Arua, where. So now they were, uh, they were spoiling the business for SEDO. SEDO is basically also business oriented, eh? much as it wanted to help the community. But at the same time, they could pack these beans and redistribute it to other areas. So if I gave you a certain quantities, and then you deceive me that instead of 10 bags, you're giving me five, you're killing my business. And so SEDO went on shifting to other areas like Kabula, it went, now it is up to Mitiana. You see, now it has shifted to other areas. Uh, the volumes that we engage in as SEDO have changed. Like I mentioned, we began with, initially we began with the, it was uh, 900 kilograms. Then we went to five. Then now we are talking about 200 tons in a season. What does that mean? That translates in one, the number of people that we are working with have changed. 
So initially, as I mentioned, we began with seven farmers. We went to 15, now we are talking about 20,000 farmers. Very much so. Some of these farmers, I know one who is already here with us in this particular upscaling of technologies, who has managed to construct a house out of those beans, is able to take children, about three or four have gone to university, and at the same time, he still maintains the project, which maintains his kind of day-to-day -day running home affair. So most of these farmers, if I told you, you become trustworthy, definitely so, you become progressive. You move from one step to another. You do not remain the same. Uh, new bean varieties has has become has changed mo most of our farmers and uh, even the cooperative because where we started we started in uh, our office was sitting room for one of our farmers but we managed to have our office also as the cooperative they are just uh, started. Uh, constructed in the, the store. Now the store is just on finishing, on finishing level. I was able to get a lot of money. I was able to get a lot of money. I was able to get a lot of money. I was able to get a lot of money. I was able to get a lot of Tero <laughs> Bangazem, University, Initially, we are talking about beans costing 300 to 500 shillings. But today, we are buying a kilogram of beans at 2,000 shillings at farm gate price. So that means that the incomes of the farmers are changing or have changed. We had not registered as a seed company, but today we are registered as a seed company. So these are things that have that are benefits that have really happened and it is partly because of the interactions that we have with the, the National Agricultural Research uh, Institute or organization. Beans have changed the lives of countless farmers. This week we've heard from farmers and scientists about bean varieties rich in zinc and iron, about the challenges faced while growing them and the handsome rewards. Join us next week and learn about a crop that 8 in 10 farmers is growing in Uganda, maize. We'd like to hear from you. Reach us on Twitter, Facebook or YouTube at Naro Uganda.